All right, it's um, on the top of the hour. Uh, welcome everyone to the Next Gen Mentoring Forum. The Next Gen Mentoring Forum series is to empower, educate, and illuminate individuals who are interested in the financial planning industry. At each forum, an expert will discuss a topic in the field of financial planning with the purpose of inspiring critical thoughts and discussion. Today's session is to interview a successful financial planning practice, and I think that everyone is in for, for a very, very good uh, discussion today. Uh, my name is Jolly Jen. I am the Assistant Professor and Director of Financial Planning Program at California Lutheran University. Um, I also maintain an active financial planning practice specializing in succession program management at Value Growth Institute. I've authored three books. The most recent one is Enhancing Retirement Success Rates in the United States. The Next Gen Mentoring Forum is sponsored by California Lutheran University School of Management Financial Planning Program. We offer MBA in financial planning that helps financial advisor pursue a leadership position or grow their financial planning practice by deploying advanced financial planning, effective client communication, counseling, and streamlined practice management, as well as leveraging FinTech. Today, I have the honor to interview Mr. Danny um, Zalad. Yeah, I hope that I pronounced it correctly. I know I'm gonna mess up. <laughs> um, so Danny is the market director and executive direct, uh, director at Chase Private Client and JP Morgan. Um, he is going to be here today to discuss why JP Morgan Chase um, Advisor Development Program is the right choice for you. Now, prior to JP Morgan Chase, Denny was a financial advisor in Merrill Lynch, transitioned into Bank of America as a market manager. He was also a head, the head of the investment service at the Orange County Retirement Investment Services, right before joining the JP Morgan Chase. So welcome, Denny, how are you? Hey, Dr. Chan, good afternoon. Uh, thank you everyone for having me here. So tell us about you first, and then I will, we'll jump right into several different type of questions. Sure thing. Well, just a belated Happy New Year to everyone, uh, in, in case uh, you know the, the year starting well off for you. Um, a little bit about me. Um, I'm originally from Los Angeles, so I actually grew up in Los Angeles, in about the East Hollywood area, for those of you who are from L.A., um, grew up there, went to high school out in Los Angeles, a major Dodger fan, of course, Laker fan as well. Um, I went to college out in Riverside. So even though I grew up in Los Angeles, I went to college out in Riverside. Uh, my parents were, were never in finance, uh, so I didn't get that desire from, from my parents. Um, my trajectory is actually a little different. Um, the, my career in finance is, is almost a second career for me. Um, I initially... My undergrad uh, was actually in religious studies. Um, back then in college, I had no desire uh, to go into business or to be a financial advisor. Um, earlier on, my desire was actually to be a pastor. So I went to seminary school um, after uh, my undergrad years and I, I got a degree in theology. Uh, my intent was to be a, a professor uh, at a certain point. I was either gonna be a professor or uh, be a pastor. Um, and I chose to, to become a pastor. So really, my, the early part of my career, my 20s, I, I was a, a pastor, um, and it was only a little bit later where I got the interest in finance and being a financial advisor. Um, I've always had the desire to help people, and I think that desire you hear is very common for folks who are in, in financial planning. Um, when I interview individuals and I ask them why do they want to be a financial advisor, the number one answer I always receive is their desire to help people. And I think that's the, the key thing to have uh, before you, you launch into a career like this. Um, I got started at Merrill Lynch uh, at, uh, initially um, after my time as a, as a pastor in Los Angeles. So I spent some time as a financial advisor. I loved the role. I learned a lot with a great company. Um, I was promoted into management after that. So I began managing certain territories for the company. 
primarily in Los Angeles uh, and in the uh, Southern California region. Um, and I'm here now at Chase. And what I do at Chase is I, I'm what's called a market director. Um, I run a market, or market directors generally run a market, which is a geographical area. But my responsibilities are to run this program called the Advisor Development Program in the state of California. Um, we launched this program in 2018, uh, and it's been very, very successful, uh, um, very su successful program for individuals who are interested in becoming uh, financial advisors. Bear with me. I'm, I'm just having a little bit of trouble of uh, getting my slides over. So let me start the slide over again. Bear with me. I have some questions for you. So just a sure. moment. Sometimes the, uh, I'm able to control the slide. Sometimes I'm <laughs> able to control the slide. Yeah, so, so it all depends on what I'm doing at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So, so the questions that I have was, um, you're actually the second person that I know that was starting in the financial planning career after a pastor. So, oh, and wow. I have so much uh, respect for, for you because you understand uh, counseling. Most financial advisors are not trained to do counseling. So I think that that probably plays really well uh, with your time in Merrill Lynch. Uh, but my question was, you mentioned that you, you, mentioned that you transitioned from from a totally different industry, basically, into the financial planning career. What are some of the key um, challenges that you face as you transition in? And what advice would you give people if they are in, in their second career transi transition into yeah. the financial planning? Yeah, um, I have, uh, in, in my interviews with, with people who have had the desire to want to enter into finance or financial planning, I've always heard them say a common theme for why they've always been hesitant uh, to get into the field. And a lot of them have said that they're, they're afraid, um, either afraid of failing or afraid that they're not prepared to enter into financial planning, either because their parents were not in finance or maybe their, their degree or their background or their experience was, was not in finance. Uh, for, for myself, uh, I think the, the, the number one challenge I had uh, with moving from a life that I thought was completely different, you know, from, from ministry into financial planning was, again, that sense of fear, uh, the sense that my undergrad was not in financial planning. Um, my, I didn't have a background in financial planning. I didn't really know anyone in financial planning. I just had that desire and the idea to want to do it. I, I felt I could do a good job in it. Um, I felt that I could learn the products very well, that I could provide good recommendations. and that I had the heart to listen to people and, and their concerns. Um, but that barrier, that barrier of fear was something very significant because it's, it's, it's something that can hinder people um, or sometimes it acts as a motivating factor to, to keep moving on. And for me, it, it served as both a, a hindrance uh, in the sense that I really thought carefully about becoming a financial advisor. I, I wanted to make sure I was doing a, a, a good, making a good decision but also the motivation to know that, um, you know, I, I felt that I could do this, um, that I wanted to help people, and that was significant enough for me to keep moving forward. Uh, so that transition is something that I find that many people are experiencing, either when they're young, when they're older, or they're, or, or they're changing careers. Uh, and my recommendation would be, you know, um, the wonderful thing about financial planning uh, and being an, a financial advisor is, your ability to relate to people, regardless of whatever age you are, um, it's the connection you have with someone. Uh, and sh you should not let fear uh, interrupt that because ultimately what you want to do is you want to improve someone's life, either their household life, the life of their kids, the life of their business. So that motivating factor should always overcome any fear you have uh, in, in becoming a financial advisor and entering into financial planning. So um, that's, a, that's a great point, though. You mentioned about this, this profession really is everything about connecting with people, connecting with the household, and connecting with their goals and desires and really helping them to get somewhere. And I, I remember when I first started, I wasn't having that much fear, to be honest. 
I was just, I didn't know what I was doing to be <laughs> at the very beginning. But I think what I ended up spending a lot of time uh, preparing, entering into the industry was to build up the confidence. And I think that confidence is not the same as fear. Uh, the confidence that I was oftentimes lack of at the very beginning was, so am I actually understanding the product well enough or am I understanding the client's goals enough to able to match the proper advice. So it took me a while to, to gain that confidence. And I remember back then, I actually hired a sales coach just to teach me how to close deals and, and things like that. And, and ultimately what I realized that it has nothing to do with the sales uh, ability. It has everything to do with exactly what you say, how you relate to that individual, how do you, re you, you relate to that family and how well you understand what they are looking for. They too, clients also have fears and it's our job to kind of, uh, not necessarily handholding the entire process to guide them through that. So, so I totally get uh, what you're saying about fears could potentially um, be hindered when you enter the, the industry, but that connecting to the clients, uh, that's, that's really key. So thank you for sharing that. Um, do you, other than, other than uh, being in the religious industry first into the financial planning, and obviously you have moved up very, very quickly in, in this very complex um, uh, profession, uh, do, you, do you yourself have any type of hobby that you do to kind of help you more center in life, not just work, work, work? So share with us one <laughs> hobby that you actually uh, do enjoy doing today. <laughs> Yeah, you know that's uh, um, you know when, when I was younger, I was I was all about work, 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 um, and um, I, I don't know if I was maybe trying to prove something uh, to myself, but as I've gotten older, you know, a balanced lifestyle has become more important, which has also helped me increase my productivity. So I'm actually more productive now because I'm able to allocate my time or even say no. Like learning how to say no is, is sometimes a skill that that we develop as we. We, we get more experience, uh, but with me, um, some of my hobbies, um, you know, I, I find a lot of value in, in exercise. So every morning, uh, the first first thing I do is, is I exercise, um, and that keeps me really balanced for the day. Um, I can think about the day ahead. It keeps me healthy, gives me more energy throughout the day, and, and, and it's, it's all about consistency, you know, in, in life. In whatever field you have, it's the ability to be consistent every day and success keeps uh, increasing as you do it little by little. So for me, exercise is really important to keep a healthy and balanced lifestyle. Um, I like to read a lot of books, so I always have a book list that, that I'm reading. Um, I try, I try I, although I read a lot of finance, a lot of magazines and books, I like to broaden my perspective. So I'm a big fan of literature, fiction. Um, so I, I love uh, reading that. It just gives me a different perspective on uh, people's life, where they come from, and although it's fiction, uh, it still gives me a, a different sense of how people write, how they see the world, um, right. and so it's, it's a wonderful, I think being balanced in life is very critical with, with your long-term success. Right, I, I totally agree with that. I, I think that over time that I, um, I exercise like you uh, as well, and um, I think that that exercise consistently every morning help me that I'm not only awake, but able to plan <laughs> properly for the day. Um, I, it, you know, for, for some, for quite some time now that I realize that I don't actually have need to have coffee in the morning. It's just by having a good consistency exercise every day. I actually don't need to have coffee or tea in the morning. So, so I'm glad wow. to, to, to hear that you are able to consistently doing exercise and, and reading. And, and you're right. Um, oftentimes that, we tend to try to catch up with what's the latest and what is the hottest topics in the industry. Uh, but, but I also found that reading outside of the industry creates more way to help me connect with clients, um, oftentimes to see what's, what others are talking about. And perhaps those are the things that I can use to connect with clients as well. So thank you for sharing with your hobby. Um, so let's um, that's, uh, move on to talk about um, how did, how, um, why is, um, why is Morgan, uh, JP Morgan Chase, um, the right choice for, for people? Let's talk about JP 
Morgan Chase as a company first before we jump right into the financial advisor development program. Mm -hmm. So I'm, uh, uh, I've been with, uh, with Chase uh, for about a year. Um, and I have to say, I really love this company. Um, I've been with various industries, not industries, but different companies before. You know, every company is good in its own way. Uh, but J.P. Morgan Chase is a, a very thoughtful company, um, and you see that with, with their leadership and, and their decisions. Um, they do a really good job of taking care of the clients. Uh, they're very customer-obsessed, um, and just they have a strong reputation. Reputation is very important to build trust with people and always doing the right thing. Uh, I love being here. Um, I love what the company stands for. I look forward to, you know, when you work for someone you really love and, and you do a job you enjoy, you, you go to work very happy and you want to contribute more to the lives of the employees, to the growth of the company, but also to customers. So you right. have a sense of optimism. So I carry a lot of optimism every day. I love what I do and I love the company I, I belong with. And you know, unfortunately, they give me an opportunity to do something very significant in life. That's wonderful. And, and I think that, um, what it comes down to, there's so many different firms in the industry, big, small, medium size. Uh, and you are absolutely right that the leadership takes a huge chunk of how they uh, help their employees and in turn the employees help their clients. So, and, and that builds up the, the reputation going forward. So thank you for sharing a little bit about um, J.P. Morgan Chase. Uh, and then talk to us about this financial advisor development program. I know that we have talked about that over the phone, but for the benefits of those who are not aware of this, would you just say, briefly take us through what that program looks like um, and uh, who will be the best fit uh, to be considering that, position, that type of uh, program? Sure. So I, I run the uh, what's called the Advisor Development Program uh, in the state of California. It's a national program, but I direct the program here in California. Uh, the goal of the program is really to create a diverse and inclusive uh, community of financial advisors. Um, and when you think of that idea, um, the the idea of becoming a financial advisor uh, is open to to many people across all walks of life. Uh, whether you are young and you're thinking about the kind of career you want to have um, or whether you're in a different financial industry and you want to go with a, maybe a company that values financial advising, or if you're older or at any stage of your career and you're thinking about changing careers and you're wondering maybe if financial advising might be a good place, um, this program is a two- to three-year program. And it's designed – it's almost like going back to school um, – because there is, uh, it's a two to three year program where, where people come in, you don't have to be licensed. Um, in fact, this program is for people who are not licensed. Uh, Chase has different platforms for folks who are already licensed, but this particular program is for people who are not licensed. Uh, so people come in non-licensed, they may have some background in finance, maybe they're in banking, or they may have just a desire to be a financial advisor, uh, but they come into the program uh, and they spend about the first four months uh, just studying for all their securities exams, so the SIE, the Series 7, 66, and then Life and Health. So we equip them with all these securities exams and licenses right from the beginning, so they become fully licensed right from, from, from the get-go. Uh, they then spend their first year really learning about the basics of, of how to uh, interact with clients. Uh, they learn the Chase culture, the Chase systems. They learn how to work with their partners and how to really discover client needs and how to fulfill their needs with products and, and presentations. So the first year is about really developing those essential skills of having that interpersonal communication and skills with people and building that bond of trust. Uh, the second year, uh, the candidates or the participants move into what's called a private client banker role. Uh, that's more of a specialized role uh, because the uh, bankers at that level work with more of our higher affluent clients who have larger deposits, but also have different needs uh, for their life and for their household. Uh, at that point, they also begin working close with a financial advisor um, that sits in their branch. And so they work on a lot of things together, uh, such as portfolio management, um, asset allocations. So they, the, Candidates in stage two begin to learn a lot about 
how to construct portfolios, how to do financial reviews, um, how to make accurate recommendations. Um, so it's a very significant time for them that second year. In the third year, they move on to becoming financial advisors uh, at the branch they're hired into or, or any other location that might be available uh, for them. But over a two to three, th two to three year time frame, they learn the essentials of, of how to interact with clients, how to advise them, how to keep in touch with them, in addition to learning the Chase culture and being effective financial advisors by the time they're in year three. So uh, what, one of the things that I was impressed about the program was I remember when I, when I entered the industry where um, I entered through the broker dealer side with, with a insurance industry, if you will, even though it's a, it's a um, same licensing that you mentioned, the series 766 and life and health, uh, the same thing. But what I didn't have was I never had any training. I did not have training about how to interact with the clients, how to actually um, understand the company culture that wasn't even uh, available to, to find out. Um, and also in your second year, you mentioned that you pair up with a financial advisor and that wasn't available to me either. So, and, and that's why I was very impressed with your program because I think for someone who, whether or not is young coming into the industry or someone who is a career changer, having that type of training, it is really going to help you excel uh, very, very well. Now, the second thing that I, I'm, I'm impressed with with the, your program is that um, when I was entering into the industry, industry, I have to uh, basically build my own book of business, meaning that I have to go on hunt clients. I know in the banking industry where the clients come to you. So that very first few years becomes really critical to help advisor build up that confidence quickly compared to where I was before. I did not have that opportunity. I was just pretty much just a, just a very dumb luck that was very successful at the very beginning, uh, but I really didn't have that much training. So, so I think that this, um, the way that you uh, describe the first year, second year, and third year for anyone who wanted to have a solid training, I think this is really a, a good place to be. Now, the next questions that I have is oftentimes company would invest this type of, um, it's a lot of investment for JP Morgan Chase to do this type of training program. Um, do you see people who left in first year, second year, third years, or uh, what is that type of, um, uh, what is your experience when it comes to people leaving and why are they leaving and, and wh who are most likely to stay within your program? We, um, the program is, is been in existence for two years um, and we've had a lot of excitement with people uh, um, entering into the different classes. So every quarter we have new classes uh, in different openings uh, across California. So for example, right now we have openings for our March 2020 class, uh, which we just started interviews for on, on Tuesday. Actually, just yesterday was the first day for that. And they'll continue for the next four weeks. And then the next class will be in June. So four times a year we have these recurring classes for people to come in. and. You almost move up like like you're in university again. Uh, you move in together as a team. So everyone really bonds together. They learn from each other. Uh, they grow together. Uh, we've had a lot of success with uh, candidates moving forward into every role. Um, we haven't had uh, any departures um, with oh, wow. uh, us here in California. So it's it's uh, it's it's a very uh, people are very enthusiastic to be a part of it. Um, they love being part of the company. They feel like they're developing. And ultimately, it fulfills what they want. You know, they want to know that they can have a successful career, and they want to be with a team and with a company that values their development into that career. Um, and we try to yeah. build in as much support as we can uh, with that. I, I think that speaks volume. If you haven't had people leaving, that really says a lot about the company culture, the company training, and, and so on and so forth. Um, so thank you for, for answering that question. Um, so if, um, if you were to approach uh, students who, whether or not they are in the financial or financial planning really doesn't matter, or prospective students that are coming into the field, um, why, was, why should they actually consider this career path at JP Morgan? Mm -hmm. 
Well, whether whether it's with us at uh, J.P. Morgan Chase or you know a, a different company, you know the, the career of financial planning and financial advising is, is very significant. I think ultimately you always want to start with that desire and having that heart to to want to help people because that's what's going to carry you uh, throughout the months, throughout the years, uh, having that desire that that never goes away. Uh, but also knowing that um, you have the ability and, and almost the honor of following someone throughout their life. Uh, so true, you could yeah. ideally follow someone, you know, who's maybe young and they start their business and you help them open up their first retirement account and they, they succeed, they keep growing and they get married, you get acquainted with their wife, their kids. So you almost become this this close advisor to their family and to their kids throughout the year. So it becomes very meaningful long term with the impact that you make within the community. Yeah, I I I um I agree with you that you know with the desire of helping helping people and um, I think that that the rewarding part of it is exactly what you described. You know, you're having a meaningful impact for people's life, and they are potentially tons of people that you have opportunity to help with. So that that's an that's an incredible rewarding system, if you will. Uh, especially, it brings meaning to someone's life. Now, I know that. Um, for those that are interested, they can just simply go onto your website and, 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 and search about the advisory development program. Um, other than that, that URL, which I'm displaying on the screen, uh, other than that URL, are there any additional resources that can help them if they need additional information? Um, the, the, the website does a very good job of describing all the different stages uh, of the program in, in very uh, good detail. Um, you're, um, with every quarter, um, people can apply to the different uh, openings that they have. Um, once you apply, then a recruiter will reach out to you and then have a conversation with you, and that gives you the ability to ask a little bit more questions that you weren't able to find on the website and also have a connection uh, with someone on the other side. Uh, but from, from the beginning to the end, we value a really good experience for people who apply uh, just who are curious on the website, who want more information with the recruiter, and even those who move it, who advance into the applicant stages and interview stages. We really value a good experience from beginning to the end. Okay, thank you. I, I really do appreciate it. Um, if you were to give one advice to, to the next-gen financial planning professions that are coming through, uh, what would that be? Uh, <laughs> that's a hard question. I would... I know. <laughs> Um, you know, to, to sum it down to one, um, I, I think my, my one advice would be just to continually have an optimistic attitude about life. Um, you know, the, the one thing, the one wonderful thing about uh, being young and being youthful in your career is you always have this sense of discovery about the future. You know, you're, you're wondering about your career and you're thinking about the classes to take and you keep looking forward. I think that desire, that the desire to discover and be enthusiastic about life and the, about what you can accomplish, that is something that will always lead you to success in any business that you have. Because whether you've been in your career for 10 or 20 years, you constantly want to improve and get better. And it's only accomplished by having that really optimistic attitude about the future. So if anything, I, I would encourage you to keep that optimism about the future and about the things that you're able to accomplish. Yeah, well said. So optimism about the future. And I will also add that not only, uh, you know, the, the crew in, crucial ingredient for the optimism of the future is you have to remain curiosity. You know, you have to be curious about what's going on and use that energy to, to discover what's, uh, what's ahead. Um, so thank you, uh, Denny, very much. That is such an honor to have the opportunity to, to, uh, to interview today. And that's pretty much conclude our interview for the webinar. Um, the next um, next gen mentoring form. Uh, wanted to thank California Lutheran University School of Management Financial Planning Program for sponsoring today's webinar session. For those uh, for those are interested, you are welcome to attend our info session, um, and that URL is on the screen. And uh, once again, that we offer MBA in financial planning helps financial advisor pursue a leadership position to grow their financial planning practice by developing advanced financial planning, effective communication with clients, counseling, streamlined practice management, 
as well as leveraging fintech. With that, I wanted to uh, thank everyone for attending today. Our next um, session is on January the 28th, 1 p.m. And um, the topic is going to be uh, the retirement success rate. And I'm gonna be using my uh, peer review research book that I just published to help advisor looking at from a big data perspective, how can you use these big data to influence clients and how can you use these big data to prospect additional um, prospective clients in and ultimately help your clients to be successful in retirement. So until then, uh, we'll see you next time in January the 28th at 1 p.m. Thank you everyone and goodbye.